is Matt Lischke, Senior Ag Advisor with Local Land Services. In this video, we will take a close look at the livestock data, which can be viewed on Farming Forecaster. The information that I'm about to go through builds on the previous video titled Making Sense of the Pasture Forecast. So in essence, it's a two-part series. In this video, I'll be comparing the same two sites for demonstration purposes. It's also important to note that the information that I'm about to show you is from uh, the end of June 2020. So it's just a snapshot of a point in time. And while the data and graphs will obviously change over time, the methods and principles around how to read and interpret the information uh, stays the same. So in the previous video, we looked at the, the pasture forecast, which is located in the top right-hand corner of the Farming Forecaster homepage. And if you're unsure about how to read uh, and interpret this pasture forecast graph, then um, have a look at the video called Making Sense of the Pasture Forecast. So in addition to the pasture forecast, um, Farming Forecaster also provides information around predicted livestock performance for the forecast period. And this information is accessed by clicking on the, the more pasture detail button um, at the just below the pasture forecast graph just down here. So like in the, the previous video, um, we will also focus on, on the gunning side as a, as a, as a, for demonstration purposes. Um, and we'll also compare the gunning to uh, one of the sites on the Monero. So if we click on more pasture detail, we'll go to the what's called the pasture forecast page. Now, as mentioned in the previous video, it's important to take note of this table up the top. And because this table contains important information regarding the farm system and the assumption used in the grass grow model. So again, the left hand side um, contains the livestock information. Uh, we can see what enterprise is, is run, um, lambing um, or calving date, weaning dates, information around when young stock are sold um, and replacement strategies. And there's also a, an annual DSC rating as well. On the right hand side of the table, over here, this contains information around what the pasture is, um, soil type, soil fertility, elevation, and so on. So the information up the top of this pasture forecast page, it's important to have a look at this because that'll really help you to get a better understanding uh, on what the information and the outputs on this, on this page are actually based around. So the pasture forecast and the other graphs on this page, in, including the livestock graphs, they're all produced by, by a tool called GrassGrow. And, and in the previous video, I provided a, a brief overview on GrassGrow and, and how, how a technical run is performed. So again, just quickly, GrassGrow is a decision support tool that simulates a grazing enterprise. So for each location, farm systems have been built using local soil information, pasture species, livestock enterprises, stocking rates, and so on. A tactical run is where grass grow uses historical weather data, in this case, the last 30 years, to model pasture and livestock production for the period ahead. So at the beginning of each month, the grass grow model is spun up to the forecast date, as we can see on this little example down the bottom right-hand corner, um, showing green herbage or, or pasture availability. The model is spun up to a certain point in time and then based on the starting conditions um, being you know what soil moisture like pasture availability livestock conditions so on the model then uses the most recent 30 years of weather data for that site to actually simulate the next four months ahead and so the end result is you get 30 possible outcomes so it's important to note that these projections, the pasture projections and livestock performance and whatnot, these projections are based on historical weather data. They are not based on what the Bureau is forecasting. So we'll go back to our, our gunning site. So gunning is located on the southern tablelands near Goulburn. And um, the forecast period 
if we just scroll down to the the pasture forecast the forecast period that we looked at in the in the previous video was the june through till the end of september period and um, given the strong start to the the 2020 season on the tablelands the pasture forecast for gunning was in a very very strong position um, so we, we we looked at this this black tracking worm which was um, very high up on the on the historical uh, range sitting around the 90th sort of percentile so it's well above average for this time of the year in terms of feed in the paddock and the projection lines these three projection lines going forward indicated that this this was to remain the case um, right through uh, for the four four months ahead out to the end of September so that was the that was the pasture forecast for this June to September um, 2020 period for gunning. If we scroll down the, the plant available water graph, um, also showed very good moisture for this time of the year. Um, so again, reflecting the, the strong start on the Southern Tablelands to the, the 2020 season. And the ground cover um, graph, which sits a bit further down the page, um, was also indicating that you know ground cover was sitting you know almost 100 percent and based on the current conditions the model was projecting um, over the forecast period out through to the end of september that you know ground cover regardless of what happens with the season was going to be hovering you know 90 percent or better so ground cover wasn't it wasn't a concern you know way above the the 70 percent sort of threshold that we we tend to sort of talk about so a very robust position and that's where the, the last video left off so now we'll just scroll a bit further down the page for this gun insight and we'll focus on the, the livestock graphs or the livestock data that comes out of grass grow for the projection period so if we go down the first two graphs that we have here um, deal with young stock under under stock weight and so these two graphs here provide information around current live weight, live weight of young stock and their likely performance throughout that forecast period. So for the male weaners, um, you know, this information, these sort of graphs can be of value um, from a marketing perspective if you're trying to target a certain weight range. Um, so for example, you know, what are my chances of hitting a certain weight by a certain date? And you can also use uh, these graphs here to get a sense of how your replacement females uh, might be tracking in the coming months. So the top graph deals with the male portion, while the second graph underneath deals with both males and female weaners. So if we just focus on the top graph to start with, just like the pasture and the ground cover graphs, the coloured lines all have a common starting point. And again, we are looking at both the, tra the trajectory and the spread of the lines. So in this example, which is for gunning, we can see that the male weaners, which are almost now 12 months of age, uh, are starting the period at around around sort of 56 kilos. So this is stock weight up the side. Um, that's their starting live weight in the model, around 56 kilos. Um, and we, if we look at those projection lines, and we've got the you know the 10th, 25th, 90th, and uh, 50th and 90th. So there's there's four different projection lines there. If we look at those lines, you can see there's very little difference right through that period ahead. They all kind of sit right over top of each other. And the reason that's the case is just because of the strength of the season at this location at the moment uh, and just the amount of pasture in the system. So regardless of really what that's sort of saying is regardless of, of really which way the season goes from over the next four months, you know, whether we have above average or below average growth, because of the strong starting position, um, those young stock will continue to put on good weight um, right right through the period ahead. This graph might look a little bit funny in that the lines just stop, you know, in early August. And the reason why that's the case is because with this this system, the new lambs hit the ground on the uh, on the 11th of August, and these this group now hit, um, well, this group of animals reach 12 months of age and they therefore move into another category. So the graph underneath, the second graph, this picks up the same information, but this time 
it looks at the probability of stock uh, reaching um, a certain weight during that projection period. So we've got probability up the side and we've got maximum stock weight across the bottom. And now this time with this graph, it shows both the males, which is the males of the, this orange line, um, and it also shows the, the females as well. In this example, based on the live weights at the start of the forecast period, which was around that, um, for the males, which was around that sort of 56 kilos, um, grass grow is indicating that there's, how do you read this? Grass grow is indicating that there's roughly a 100% um, a chance that the males will reach, uh, if we looked in the bottom, 100% chance of reaching about 61.5 kilos at some point during that period. And at the other end of the scale, there's around a 1% chance of getting to around 63 and a half kilos. So if you look at the, the spread between top and bottom, you can see that there's only really a, a two, kilo, two kilo difference, which is a pretty tight range. So this is just confirming what, what this, um, this top graph is saying. And the female portion is also showing a tight range and it's, it's indicated by the steepness of this line. So on the female side, there's a 100% chance of those weaners reaching 52 kilos. Um, based on the current conditions and where they are and, and that, that forecast over the next four months. So 100% chance of those female weaners reaching 52 kilos. And at the other end, there's a 1% chance that they'll reach almost 54 kilos. Yeah, so a pretty tight range again, um, around about the two kilo mark for both males and females. The dotted line in the middle here, the dotted line shows the 50th percentile or, or the midpoint. Um, so this is saying that there's a 50% chance that the females will reach a little bit above 53 kilos, which is shown over in the blue box over here. And if you take a midpoint for the males, um, there's a 50% chance of males reaching uh, 62.8 kilos. It's important to note with these graphs that grass grow doesn't take worms or, or into account or any other animal health issues that might be taking place. So these graphs are assuming that there are no animal health issues holding growth back. So that, that deals with, with the young stock and, and their likely performance over this forecast period. If we move a bit further down the page, um, the final graph is, is called total supplement fed. And this shows the likelihood of supplement being required during the forecast period. Uh, and, and the amount which is expressed on, or which is shown or displayed in, in kilograms per head. So in the grass grow model, the stock are being fed barley in the paddock uh, with all farming systems, and the barley contains 13 megajoules of metabolizable energy um, or 13 ME. And so when, when stock reach um, or fall to a certain condition thresholds, that's when the grass grow model will kick in and the stock will st start to be fed. The supplement graph deals with the female portion and um, it, so it doesn't include the males, so it includes all your females, so you've got your, your mature females, uh, maidens and, and weaners. And the reason why this graph has been included on farming forecaster is that during difficult times, producers have used this sort of information to help them in their planning around how much grain or supplement might be required. These graphs are also, um, as mentioned, a probability graph. So we've got um, probability up the side here. This is the supplement graph for the gunning site for the period, um, for the same period as the pasture forecast from that 1 June to the 30th of September, 2020. And due to the amount of feed in the system, grass grow is indicating um, basically a zero chance that the weaners or maidens will require any supplement during the four month window, even if the season turned for the worst. So hence why you can't see the orange or any orange or, or a yellow line, the right, right up against, hard up against this left hand side. For the mature females, which, are, which is represented by this, this blue line, for the mature females, what the what the grass grow is saying is during this forecast period, 
there's roughly only a, about a 35% chance um, that some form of feeding will be required, and that's just because of the, the strength of the season at the moment at gunning. Um, so there's only a 35% chance that something's going to be required in the four-month period ahead. Um, and at the other end of the scale, you know, absolute worst-case scenario, you'd be looking at around about 15 kilos, 15 to maybe 17 and a half kilos of um, supplement per U for the whole 120 day forecast period, which, you know, if you're running, say, for every thousand U's, you'd be looking at about, um, you know, 15 to 17 and a half tonnes. So, um, and for these higher amounts, you know, if you look at the probability of being up here, there's, there's really a, I guess, a less than 10% chance that these sort of levels of feeding would be required and that would only be required if things went pear-shaped in a big way and would be um, would be required around lambing time when when requirements are really going up so that's a look at the the livestock uh, graphs and outputs for for the gun insight if we now switch across to the um, the other example that we looked at in the previous video um, where we compared um, a site on the Monero Unfortunately, the Monero has largely missed out on the autumn rain this year in, in 2020, and the region is facing an extremely difficult winter. So, which is which is shown here by the pasture forecast graph, which looks, as you can see, very different than the previous one for Gunning. Um, Gunning was sitting well up in this the top of the green zone for for current pasture availability and what was forecast to happen over the coming months. In in complete contrast, the Monero. Unfortunately, the current herbage mass or pasture availability, which is this black tracking line, is sitting at historically very, very low levels, less than the, the 10th percentile. And um, basically, the, this, the, these projection lines are indicating um, that this situation is unlikely to change until very late in the forecast period uh, when temperatures start to increase. So that was the situation for the Monero, or for one of the Monero sites. And then we had a look at, um, or, if, or if we have a look at the plan available water, um, you can see that this red dot, which is the a three-day average, is is uh, sitting around one millimeter plan available water for the for the root zone. Um, so this is um, a modelled um, soil moisture level out of the grass grow model. So it's it's, um, it's it, so the grass grow model is showing that you know we're, it's extremely dry and down at around the bottom 10% of years if we look at the long-term average for this time of the year. So low pasture mass, very, very dry conditions. And if we scroll down, ground cover was also um, not looking good. And grass grow was indicating a high risk of, of uh, well, ground cover is already um, below that 70% threshold. And it was looking at um, basically remaining sort of, or probably trending further, further below um 70 percent if if you know if changes weren't made and remembering that the grass grow model assumes the, the, or sorry there is no destocking policy within these grass grow farm systems so it's assuming that that these farms are um uh, the farming system is still being run at full capacity uh, no destocking has been done and um and stock are being fed in the paddock and, and hence why it's starting to flag some pretty big ground cover issues so that's that's where we left left the Monero. Um, that's where we got to with the Monero sites in the previous video. And and now, like the gunning site, we'll actually have a look at what these livestock graphs look like as well. So if we scroll down the page um, and and have a look at the stock weight graphs for the Monero site. So like the gunning site, this this farm system for the for this Monero site is also based on a self-replacing Merino flock uh, with lambing commencing on the 11th of September. So um, again, this top graph deals with the, the weather weaners. Now, due to extremely tough conditions, these weaners actually lost some weight in, in May, which we, we can't see because we've, we've gone past that point. But the weather's actually, these weaners actually lost some weight in May, which triggered the supplementary feeding in the grass grow model. So which is why the, you know, which is why these projection lines are all um, sort of sitting over each other. And that's because the livestock performance during this period is now being driven primarily by the supplement. You know, like the gunning example, these projection lines, they stop at a certain point in this graph 
and that's because the wine has reached 12 months of age uh, and then are reported uh, as yearlings in the grass grow model. If we have a look now at this, um, so, th so sorry to, to go back. So the stock weight, um, this graph looks pretty similar to gunning, um, although it, because it's be, uh, with these lines very close together, um, but we can see that stock weights are, are much, much lower compared to the gunning side. And, and this has actually been driven by supplement rather than, than uh, seasonal conditions and, and pasture availability. Um, if we look at the second graph, uh, which now picks up both the, the males and females uh, weaners, if you think back to the previous example for gunning, uh, this graph here actually looks quite different. And um, it shows a much greater spread um, of the likely range in livestock weights or maximum weights reached during the period. Basically, a 100% chance that the, the stock will reach 31 and a half kilos by the end of the projection period or at some point during the projection period. Um, but there's also a 1% chance that they'll they'll get to um, about, uh, about 39, uh, 39 and a half sort of kilos. So now we're actually seeing about a, a seven and a half kilo range or differential, whereas gunning there was only about a two kilos, two kilo difference. So what this graph for the Monero highlights is that there's a much greater level of risk in terms of weaning performance and the outcome is, is much more sensitive to, to seasonal conditions and the amount of supplement provided. So moving a bit further down the, the page. So this is now the supplement graph for the, the, um, for the Monero site. And if we look at the mature females first, which is this blue line, grass growers is indicating uh, that there's uh, basically a 100% chance that at least 30 kilos of supplement will be required for the four for the four month period, which is that first of June to the end of September, and this would be uh, what you might consider the absolute minimum, and would be very unlikely to happen. It would take a a massive turnaround in seasonal conditions. At the other end of the scale, if seasonal conditions continue to be extremely tough, then grass grow is indicating there's roughly a about a 10% chance that the mature ewes will need at least 90 kilos per head um, during that period. But just remember that, again, this assumes that all stock are kept on the property uh, and there is no reduction in numbers. The midpoint is around about, as you can see, so we look at that 50th percentile, the midpoint's about, about 80 kilos, which if you look at 80 kilos per head over that, that four month period, um, on average, that equates to about 670 grams per head per day of, of in this case, it's assuming we're using a barley or, or something or a cereal grain with an energy value of 13 ME. So if you were doing a feed budget, you might use the 80 kilo figure as a starting point and then monitor conditions as the season progresses. So and it's also worth noting that the planning window here again is from the 1st of June to the 30th of September and lambing, which, which you can see the lambing date on, on the top of this page, lambing uh, doesn't start until mid-September. So the amount of supplement that we are looking at here only includes the first two weeks of lactation. So it's always important with these livestock graphs to sort of have a look up the top of the page, look at those assumptions and, and just sort of see what, what point of the year are we actually up to. The orange line is for the weaners. Um, this covers the, the group of animals from weaning through to 12 months of age. Um, we can see that the orange line follows a similar trend to the mature females, um, but obviously less supplement is required as they aren't pregnant. Uh, and the yellow line is for the maiden females. Um, and in this case, what we, what we mean by maiden is it covers the group of animals from 12 months of age until they, they join the main flock, which is um, in grass grow known as replacement date, which is again, um, you can get that from the top of the page. Um, in this example, the weaner females move, um, the weaner females move to the maiden category on the 11th of, on the 11th of September. So if you're doing a budget for total supplement, you need to include all three classes of stock shown. 
if you were doing a budget on the based on this 50th percentile line, uh, you would pick up you know the 80 kilos for the mature females. Um, so you'd be looking at say 80 kilos times the number of mature females that you're running. For the young females, you would you would add up both these lines here. So um, you would be you know sort of 40 what we got 42 kilos plus another uh, two. So say 44 kilos times the number of um, of of those uh, young sort of weaner females that, that you're running on the property. And so remember, th this graph only deals with the female portion and doesn't include any weathers that might be still in the system. So in summary, this graph uh, is a planning tool which can help identify the likely quantities of supplement required over the coming months uh, and can be particularly useful when facing a, a difficult situation. And once you've identified the, the likely amount of supplement required, which is this is can this can help you do that, um, you can then start to cost it out and, and make, start making some calls on on what strategy you might take. Um, you know, are you going to feed and um, feed everything, or or sell some, or are you going to seek adjustment um, and so on? Uh, just a final note regarding these supplement graphs. These supplement graphs are updated monthly and they don't actually have a, a tracking mechanism um, unlike the the um, the pasture forecast um, but what you can actually do is you can use the tracking line in the pasture forecast to help guide where you might position yourself on this supplement graph so for example if the black line is trending um, down towards the red line then um, you know, you might say, well, I'm, I might err on the, I might err towards the higher, higher amounts on this graph, so below the dotted line. But if the the black line was tracking along the 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 long term, or sorry, if the black line was tracking along the 50th percentile or better, then you might pick somewhere around the dotted line or, or maybe slightly above. So you can you can use the pasture forecast that black tracking line to to try and you know you get a sense of where you might position yourself in in this graph so that brings us to the end of this video i hope you found that helpful in in terms of um you know viewing and understanding some of those livestock uh, graphs that are on farming forecaster for more detailed information on other parts of the farming forecaster tool please refer to the other videos in the series mm -hmm.